Living in Harmony is possible if you know your emotions and how to handle them. Dr. Carmen Roman will share with you in an engaging way the current psychology by sharing herself or interviewing experts who will inspire you. Learn how to live a life of fullness and how to recover your emotional harmony with Dr. Roman. Welcome to Emotions in Harmony. Hello, my wonderful listeners of Emotions in Harmony and Harmony Emotional. Now, remember, we are in podcast, in, in the podcast in audio and in Facebook Live. So you will hear um, the podcast two days after this video has been live. And just for the sake of uh, time management, um, we do the interviews most of the time, ahead of time. And you will see this kind of replay, but I am there. If you are listening or, or seeing that in Facebook, I am right now here ready to answer your questions and your comments. And most of the times the guests are too. So this time we have a topic that has been asked for uh, different families in different ways. Um, and it took me a little bit of time because I wanted, I was really looking for the person who could really address this and has experience in parenting topics. And we found it. We have with us Anna Sewell. Is that how I pronounce Sewell? Yes, perfecto. Perfecto. <laughs> uh, we have Anna Sewell with us today, and she is the host of the podcast Authentic Parenting. And um, we will introduce to her um, later, but first, let me tell you about what we are talking about, and then in talk. I am talking to you, uh, I will introduce to you another podcast. Remember, this is the month of the podcast law. And I am sharing with you what I listening, what I am listening when I am not working, <laughs> when it's for fun. So we are going to talk to you about social media, how to manage the social media with your kids. Um, what is a good age for kids to have a social media profile? Uh, what skills we could do? to foster maturity or to get them ready because social media is going to be always with them, whether we like it or not. And we cannot prevent that from our kids, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, how we can behave to protect our um, children, privacy, identity, everything until they are in age enough to do themselves. Um, how we can monitor the content, Uh, what are the implications of social, social media in our children? How we can have a serious discussion with our children about it or teaching skills if they are too young to have a discussion. Let me introduce to you the podcast. I'm going to share my screen for those who are not in the video, who are in the podcast. You can go to, um, Daniel, Dana, Dana L Counseling.com. Or you can also type the Mindful Expat and you will get directly to the Mindful Podcast, Expat Podcast. You heard before in the, in our episodes from Dana, I think a couple of times. Um, I just love her. She, she always doesn't matter what she talks about. I just love her voice, the way she puts together her ideas and any, any episode. It will be. Uh, very good. But basically, she talks about how to be uh, in out of the country, living in overseas, and how to be mindful about being a foreigner. I think you will love you will love her episodes. I am I am going through her episodes here, and we have one in common. I was her guest, and we talk about creativity to be an uh, immigrant, a creative immigrant. So you may go there. If I remember correctly, it was the 27. So get to know her and give me your comments because if I recommend something, I want to listen from you and see, did you like it? Do you want something that I recommend similar? Something like that. Yeah. And now we are officially in our interview for today. Uh, hi, Anna. How are hi. you? Good. How are you, Carmen? <laughs> Thank you for being so patient. Yes, my pleasure. And um, by the way, the Mindful Expat podcast is one of my favorites too. 
Yeah, it is. She's, she has a beautiful voice. Yeah. Yes, yes and great material. Thank and you. great material always. Yeah. It, even she told something about, about traveling or whatever. It's just yes. so well put always. Yes. Yeah. So I love the topic today. It truly took me a couple of weeks until I could figure out who was the, the correct person to talk about it. And then I start uh, seeing your content in Facebook and I, I absolutely like it. So thank you. You are more than a hundred, more 115 episodes right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's been, I've been podcasting for three years, mm -hmm. but I, I, it wasn't uh, regular in the beginning because it was a lot of work and I wasn't sure where I will go and where I will end up. But um, in the beginning, I didn't have episodes every week, um, but I've been podcasting for three years and I just love it. It, it brings me to people like you. Uh, I learn so much about myself. It just brings me joy and happiness. I think it's one of the highlights of my life right now. I agree. I totally yeah. agree. I, I just enjoy having these meaningful conversations and, yes. and meeting people and you know, positive people that want to do something in the yeah. world. And there are great podcasts that are making a difference in the world. And um, I get a lot of feedback from my listeners, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the past year as the podcast grew, I get a lot of feedback. And when I receive an email, it just touches my heart because yeah. when I make a podcast, I don't know how it's going to impact or influence someone, but when they say how it changed their life, they use words like that. I become very humbled and I'm like, oh my gosh, my little podcast from my little bedroom is influencing people. And it's just mind boggling. Yes, it is. It is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and definitely we will put a link for them to listen because I listened a couple episodes um, for this interview and I absolutely mm -hmm. love it. I was listening, actually, I just, and my plan was to listen like five minutes of different episodes and I got stuck. <laughs> I could <listen> more. <laughs> and I am not a parent. I am just a family therapist, but it's just it's oh. delightful. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> okay. So let's get into our topic. Uh, I have a question for you. What mm -hmm. is a good age? What do you think is a good age for kids to have a social media profile? Wow. Um, let's see. I think according to Facebook and Instagram and all the other social media platforms, you have to be at least 13 to have an account. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure there is a reason for that. But I have seen from my experience that children um, lie their age to open an account. And it's a very common practice. Mm -hmm. And I've also seen parents supporting them in doing so parents creating a fake um, identity right uh, and creating accounts for children now if your child is ready if your child is mature and you have rules in place and you've talked about social media it's fine i i I, I don't know if that's not a crime completely however uh what i know is you know when we're using Facebook or any social media, you see advertisements, correct? Mm -hmm. And those advertisements are targeted to your age, to your gender, to your location, to you specifically. And if I lie as a nine-year-old and create a profile that I'm 21, I may see advertisement that is not appropriate for my age. Yeah. Dating, dating, pornography, gaming, anything dangerous or uh, something that the child is not ready to access, right? So sometimes people say, oh, but we opened the Facebook account for my child just to stay connected with family. And if you are monitoring that, if you're only, you know, socializing within your small circle of family, maybe that's okay. So there are no guidelines, unfortunately, for parents to use. You have to use your common sense and you need to know your child and trust your child enough. And you have to monitor and supervise what are they doing? How are they using social media? Because we know very well that uh, social media and technology is designed to be addictive. 
uh, and it's very easy for us to lose ourselves in, in social media. And this is an uncharted territory. This is a new territory for us and for children. So we also don't have enough knowledge and tools and research, right? We have emerging research, but we don't have longitudinal studies that show the effects of social media and things of that nature. We do have research, but it's not longitudinal studies. Um, there are harms for sure. Um, but it depends how you use it also, right? You can use it wisely, smartly, but we know it's very addictive. And depending on your child, um, again, I have an almost 10-year-old daughter mm -hmm. and I have spoken with her, for example, about the age she can open up an Instagram account or social media or any of that nature. But uh, I don't think I will allow her to open up any account until she is mature enough, in my own opinion. At the moment, she doesn't have any social media. She doesn't have a phone. I don't have an iPad. Uh, she watches some TV and some computer usage. However, she's exposed to, uh, um, you know, screens at, at school, right? They do a lot of testing on the screens. They watch YouTube videos. And uh, it's not like she is not exposed to screens. Screens are everywhere, you know? Yeah. Um, but we need to wise um, how we let our children use that. It comes down to your family values, you know, what you believe in. Uh, you can't just say, no, you can't have it. No explanation. I am the parent. That That's not a good reason. You can, uh, what I encourage parents to do is to have open conversations with their children. Always, always open conversations. Um, one of my clients' child is 14 years old. They just got him a phone for the first time. And what the mother is observing is that the son goes into his room and locks the door and spends endless hours on his phone. Mother was upset. Mother wants to know what he's doing, right? And she says, that's it. If you're going to close the door, no phone for one month. That doesn't help the situation, right? Um, that breaks the connection between parent and child. It doesn't teach anything to the child. What I suggest is for parents to have open conversations. Um, they may be awkward. We may not be ready to answer their questions, but that's a good start. That's a good place to be. Yeah. It's, um, I agree with you. There are even parents help the children to open the profile. Yes, but they do. For some reason, they, they confuse. I will say, I will say, I will put it that way. They confuse the, uh, the, the wisdom or the facility to use technology with the maturity to use technology. So they are, they are past learners. They know how to create a profile. They know how to upload and download more mm -hmm. than us adults. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean they have the common sense as an adult. No, they don't. And they don't have the emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have the self-regulation skills. They don't know when to stop, how much is enough. They don't know uh, self-discipline. They don't have that. And with social media, even for adults, like we have all those wonderful skills, right? Self-regulation and we're not like in, into, uh, we're not children or well, hopefully we have all the skills, but it's hard for us to put it down. You, I go to check my work email in the morning, two hours later, I forgot what I was doing, I, but I spent all this time doing nonsense things, clicking um, to Facebook, from there to a link, to another blog, somehow end up somewhere. And I forgot what my main task was, right? So it's, yeah. very, it's very hard to expect that kind of discipline from children because this technology is designed just to suck you in, to make you addicted. You know, we know uh, about that for sure. <laughs> oh, it works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So blaming our children, criticizing our children, wanting them to handle their own technology use, it's not going to work. 
So parental involvement is necessary to guide them, to supervise them, to have conversations, um, to hear your child's opinion about things, not shush, you don't have an opinion. I don't want to hear because that's not the right way. You know, we need to welcome their opinion too and have open conversations. I asked my daughter one day, uh, she is nine. I said, if today you were to open an Instagram account, what would you post? What kind of pictures would you post? She says, selfies uh -huh. and, and beautiful pictures of nature and different things. You see how they think yeah. <laughs> right away? <laughs> selfies. Uh -huh. Um, I do have conversations with my daughter about social media and uh, things of that nature. I, I think it's important. It's never too uh, early to start. It's never too late to start those conversations um, and express your own opinion, share some research findings, hear their opinion, and just approach with curiosity instead of shutting them down because if we shut them down, they're going to go into a rabbit hole. They're, we're going to lose the connection. We're going to lose the trust. And when they need our help, when someone is cyberbullying them or when they are experiencing some kind of unfamiliar territory, they will not come to us because we already put the barrier that this is a topic we don't want to talk about. This is prohibited. Go deal on your own or, right? We don't want to create that kind of um, attitude. We had, um, I had experience when my, uh, niece, my oldest niece was around 15. She wanted a profile, a Facebook profile. Yeah. So she opened one and I was so anxious about it. I was monitoring all the time. Mm -hmm. So after two days that she opened the profile that was in Mexico and she's a beautiful teenager. Of course, mm -hmm. selfies is the first thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, she had like 200 friends. Wow. And, and it was very doubtful quality of friends. <laughs> so I went one by one and I checked and some of them were fake profiles and they were like all of these very scary things. So I, I told to her and I said, do you know this person? Do you know this person? Oh, no, it's just request. Yeah, it requests a friendship. Mm -hmm. So we sat together and we got rid like a 180. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's important. Yes. yes. Uh, it's important because children don't know what's real, what's not real, what's fantasy, what's virtual. Mm -hmm. For them, everything is virtual, right? So mm -hmm. that's a good approach to talk about and, and go through the Facebook feed or whatever account and say, do you know this person in real life? Mm -hmm. Who, what do you know about them? Because a man in Siberia can act like a woman and try to engage in some kind of romantic relationship here in America with some somebody, you know, mm -hmm. that the, the people can create fake profiles. It's easy to do. I think we need to educate our children, yes. not to threaten them, but to, depending on the age, again, you know, you want to have uh, developmentally appropriate conversations. You don't want to talk to your five-year-old about those kind of fake profiles and things like that. But with your teenagers, absolutely, you need to have those kind of conversations. I, I think um, as a parent educator, she's kind of, I feel the social responsibility to start taking seriously this topic. Yes. Um, because there has been a lot of topic about addiction, Mm -hmm. Oh, my child is addictive to the social media or the games or something. Mm -hmm. But it has been less um, conversations about what the skills I want in my child. Mm -hmm. What conversation, how I can sit and talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yes, it's important. You need to start from, you can start from neutral topics. You know, you can have a neutral topic. You don't want to start with some big topic about pornography, for example. You don't want to talk with your 14 year old about that. You, you want to come maybe from a distance, a little bit neutral topic. What you said, what you read, you can discuss together. You want to start, create that culture of talking about it. And then, uh, your child will learn that it's not scary to come to you and talk to you about all of those things. 
you know, that's the uh, culture you want to create in your household, the culture of trust and connection. And we're not judging you. We're not criticizing you. We're not prohibiting you. You're welcoming. Uh, I, I think if we have that kind of attitude, um, because children don't know that, how to navigate this uncharted territory. Uh, so what are they going to do? Most likely they will go to their friends. If the parent is closed off, they're going to find someone, right? So I think parental availability is key. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Now let's switch a little bit to the parents. I have a question about how, as parents, we can protect our children's privacy um, information that we have there. Mm. Well... This is a hot topic of debate. There is two camps. There is people who say, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to post anything about my child. It's my child's life. It's her right. She can grow up and put whatever she wants in, in this digital world. She can have her own digital footprint. That's that camp. Um, one camp. And the other one is like, oh, we live in this era. Everything is connected. We all share. It's okay. And people just share everything about their life. Now, um, I subscribe personally to the first camp. I don't share anything about my child. Uh, no pictures of my husband, my child, my family, even myself. Um, I share only one or two pictures because I'm a public figure. I have an online business. So I share only one or two pictures and it keeps rotating on, on the internet. Uh, and I talk about those things with my daughter that once you put something online, it's forever. Even if you delete, it still stays there. So I want my daughter to know that this is how I choose to live my life. Yeah. And I want her to see how we live our life because that's the best education that they can get. Uh, I personally don't share those things, not because um, I think my child will not approve. My child would be happy if I shared more about her, believe me, because she yeah. sees that everybody has a YouTube channel. Everybody puts selfies. Everybody is on social media. My child, she's a naive, innocent child. She would love if I shared more of her. Um, and I'm not so worried about child molesters will come and get my child and things of that nature. What my main concern is, I don't know those people in real life. I have 500 Facebook friends, friends. I don't even know who these people are. They're just connections that I made online. I don't think they care about me enough to see my child's picture. And I don't care enough to put my child's pictures for what? Like, I don't see a purpose in that. Maybe if you share with your friends and family, that I understand. I don't do that as well. I can choose to share privately. I am a very private person. I, But I don't criticize people who do it. I, I want to hear their opinion, why they do it. You know, I think we need to be open when it comes to social media because there is no right or wrong. And anything excessive is, of course excessive, not, not good. Like you don't want to go to two extremes, maybe. Maybe choose something in the middle. Maybe filter your life. Like when I see other people's children's pictures or uh, very intimate details of their life, I'm like, wow, really? Why? Like, why would you post that? It sort of trivializes their experience in my eyes. Um, and, and I see them like, okay, whatever. Um, so I, I don't, I don't do it for that reason, but people post everything. But what if one day, let's say your child is very young now. Um, What if one day they grow up, they're a teenager, and they don't want all of this to be publicized, their little naked picture playing a guitar? Or I see pictures, children are using the potty or potty training or doing all these cute things. They, They look cute now, but what if they are older and, and it's, it's, it's there. How are you going to explain that to your children? Um, but on the other hand, will children fight with their parents? I don't know. Um, because if a parent is like that, if the parent has created that culture of sharing, maybe the child is growing up in that culture and it's not a big deal to them. You know what I mean? So it's a very controversial topic. 
I think, yeah, I think it's still controversial. You're right. It's, um, yeah. um, I am glad that you brought the, the controversial because I have families that they don't want their child to have any profile at all, any contact, any, anything. But mm -hmm. here we live in the Silicon Valley where if you don't have a profile, you are out completely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Then, But then I also, living in the Silicon Valley, I have families where they post absolutely everything about their child. From yeah. The they are born. Um, and I think about the child is like, that child in 20 years from now is going to be very mad. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's a child's privacy, right? You, especially when a child is young, they don't have a say in the matter. I think that's basic respect, basic privacy. Mm -hmm. You don't own your child. That's your child's life. Mm -hmm. I feel awkward doing that. Mm -hmm. I sometimes share things online on my podcast about my child for educational purposes, for other parents, like a parenting mistake I made. But I don't share everything about my life. Uh, that would be insane. I think there should be a division between public and private, online and offline. You know, I think there should be that um, distinction, that differentiation, even though many people will disagree with me. And they would say, oh, we live in this global world where, you know, everything is online. We're all connected. There is no difference. But I think there is a difference. There is a difference between being online and socializing and having friends and Facebook groups and having people in your real life. There is a huge difference. We don't want to lose the real life uh, interactions, you know, and we want to, I am not suggesting creating a fake persona for the online world, uh, but I would filter what I put out there. Like what, how I show up in my real life. That's how I show up online in my Facebook group, in my podcast. But you don't see hundred percent of me. You see filtered parts of me. Uh, you know, I can't open up completely, right? Yeah. And I am more vulnerable than I'm opening up myself to a lot of things, which is not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't change who I am. I'm still the same person with the same values. I have a voice. I join discussions and conversations and I express my opinion. But I choose those conversations, you know, I don't go in like 100%. Um, I filter myself how I show up online. That, that, oh. That's what I want to um, mention. Yeah, I probably will take you in a little bit different direction. But um, my next question has to do with what, how we can, uh, if you could talk about the emotional implications of social media. Mm. our kids and how we can alleviate some of the stress. Wow. It could be really, um, we can talk about this forever. Yeah. Um, it, yes, because using, first of all, when you use social media, when you use technology, uh, it's draining. It could be anxiety provoking. You compare yourself to others, right? Others have a better life than you. Uh, for younger children, let's say teenagers, they don't have a well-defined sense of self. They're very vulnerable. They're very sensitive. So um, if somebody excludes them from a picture, they didn't go to that party, uh, they're scrolling through their um, Instagram feed and they see that they they didn't invite them to this party, they may have, uh, you know, horrible thoughts. We know that children commit suicide. We know there is cyberbullying these days. So it is an emotionally charged experience to be on social media. Um, but I think parents need to help their children navigate those waters. Um, you need to, again, be available, have curiosity, build that trust and connection, uh, openness, talk about those things, but also non, non judgmentally approach the subject. Um, and if your child is experiencing, uh, anxiety, sleeplessness, or, uh, big emotional outbursts, things of this nature, you need to provide, um, some structure, right? It could be related to overuse of social media, maybe have some guidelines and structures and rules, 
um, you know, like I have in my household screen free weekends because it just drives me crazy. I cannot be on social media using screens seven days a week, but it gives me a good break. And my daughter participates in that. Um, but if you have a teenager who is constantly on the phone, that's going to affect their well-being, their sleep, their learning, their relationships. It's going to disconnect them from the family. They're going to have all sorts of negative feelings about themselves because they're teenagers. They go through the awkward stages of development. They're going to compare themselves to others and all the other things. And children can be mean. And social media or technology gives you that ability to be anonymous. That gives you that power to say something mean. Uh, but when you are in the room with someone, you don't have the guts to say those kind of things on their face. So um, I think parents need to protect their children. They need to listen to their children when they have feelings about those things instead of invalidating, shutting their feelings down. They are real. These, your children can have fears. They can have anxiety. They can have depression. Uh, take those signs seriously. Any behavior change in your child, any mood changes, I think parents need to attune very much so these days um, and try to find out what's happening in their children's lives. Because uh, I know of families whose children are 13, 14, they have play dates, they have sleepovers, they're on the phone all the time, they come home, they don't spend time with their family, but the child is growing, the child has questions and the child has lots of emotions. Mm -hmm. So it is so easy for teenagers to be disconnected just because of the sheer uh, logistics of things. But I think parents need to be aware of that, hyper aware and um, establish those guidelines, structures, like I said, love and trust and connection so that you can have open conversations and listen to your children's feelings and don't invalidate them and be a support, be a support that that's what's important. Um, correct me if I am wrong, but I have, I, I have 25 years doing parenting education. Mm -hmm. the, the foundation is the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Communication, contact, be aware or whatever. But for me, social media, it kind of speed up everything. It did. Now yeah. Your child can be in deep depression in the next hour because it's just something that went so quickly. Mm -hmm. When in their school viral or something like that. So now the monitoring is like, more constant. That's my yes. It's stress provoking for parents too. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a constant battle. Um, parenting is not easy these days. It's very difficult. Many parents become um, friends with their children on social media, but on top of your parental duties, on top of everything else you have to um, do and manage, you have that added pressure as a parent now. Yeah. Um, Many parents have the GPS location of their child. Uh, they, they see where their child is or they see how they're interacting in their classroom. I have a client who has a surveillance video in their home. When they are at work, they constantly check what their child is doing. That's a lot of pressure and demand and a stress on the parent. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's very difficult times we live in. Uh, this is why having rules and guidelines and creating a contract with your teenager is so important. It gives you a peace of mind that you don't have to constantly monitor and supervise. You want to also give children a little bit of freedom and autonomy so that they can make their own mistakes and learn from their own mistakes. You don't want to like supervise and just stifle their growth. You know, you want to have a little bit of space for them to develop and make their own mistakes because that's important too. You know, we can't like rescue and protect them, but we cannot also let them be on their own in the in this world of social media by themselves. Parents think it's like either or. No, it's not like that. Uh, yesterday, somebody posted a question for me in my parenting group and she asked, the question, how can I manage social media and technology use in my household? We've tried everything. We've tried letting our kids use it nonstop every day. It doesn't work. Well, that's not the right approach, right? You wouldn't 
bring some kind of addictive drug and let your children say, yeah, just use as much as you want. Or you cannot do that with sugar, with, with any unhealthy thing that you think is unhealthy. Um, I think the main problem is because as parents, we do not have the skills and the tools ourselves. We struggle a lot. It, it's a yeah. difficult territory and we get a lot of pushback from children. Um, and because parents come from authoritarian uh, place, uh, pe- people think it's either or approach. I am the parent. Give it to me. Uh, you know, no more usage of this for a month. That approach is not going to work, you know, and um I think it's it's a difficult territory to for parents and for children alike. But having a contract, having simple rules, having your child be part of creating the contract is important. And you don't have to have like a five page contract, five, six major rules that give you ease, calm and sanity for everyone in the household. Um, and, and it shouldn't be like a coming from a controlling place. It should be from a place of mindfulness. It should be a place of this is a health issue. That's how we're addressing this. Um, I think when parents approach this topic from that angle, children respond well. Like mm-hmm. I had a client and, and I want to emphasize that we need to engage children in the process too. And it's not a top bottom approach when it comes to technology, especially, mm-hmm. uh, I had a client who's, uh, uh, he was my client, the father, uh, the wife died. They were separated. The couple was separated. They had a 13 year old boy. Um, the boy was living with the mother. The mother passed away in front of the child. And that was a big trauma for the boy. Uh, not only that, he had to move towns to go live with his dad which he never lived with his father before. Uh, he lost his mother. He moved to a new place. He was ought to live with his father, who he didn't have a good relationship with. And he ought to go to a new school as a teenager. Wow, that was too much for this little boy. And what he would do, escape. And he would just play his video games 24 hours a day and the father was using all sorts of authoritarian techniques including one day uh, he took all the technology into his car and brought with him to work still the child didn't go to school the child was skipping school just to stay home and play with his video games and one day the father tried everything uh, before he came to me this is what he told me. He turned the power off in the house so the child will not be able to play games. And he called me that day. On the phone consultation, I asked him, have you talked to him um, about his usage, you know, how it's affecting him? Have you like started a conversation? He says, no, like that was a novel idea for him. I said, how about this? How about you go and talk to him today and ask him, how much time do you need per day to spend on technology? And he says, you think he's going to answer? I said, well, just try, you know. He called me the next day. He said, wow, I can't believe. I said, what happened? He asked his son and his son said, are you ready for this? The son said, I need two hours a day. Okay. <laughs> That's what the child wow. said. Uh-huh. But because the father was being... Yeah, not absent, not doing anything, not even making mm-hmm. an attempt. The child was left on his own to deal with his own loss mm-hmm. and trauma, and he was playing nonstop. So then we worked with the family, and you know, it, it was fantastic how how they also got different kinds of help and things like that. But yeah, sometimes you need to talk to your children. Not sometimes. Always you need to talk to your <laughs> children. You need to, talk you need to, to them. invite them in. Have a conversation about those things. Yes. Um, create the rules, contract. And if some of the rules don't work, change them according to your day, to your life. Things are changing. Don't be like rigid. Say, no, we have all those five rules and that's it. You know, you mm-hmm. don't want to be like that. Because as I said, this is an uncharted territory. We're learning as we go. Um, so that's what I would say. There is hope. 
Yeah. There is hope. Yes. There is and hope I see and... things are changing. Yes. <laughs> I always say technology is here to stay. They, if technology is not going anywhere. Um, technology for me and the way I see it is a blessing. Uh, we just, there is hope that we will learn to chart this territory, as you say. Yes. We are learning as we, we go. Are learning. Yeah. We are learning and, um, it's not perfect, but you know, we're going to accept the reality. Yeah. And just, just as an ending note on this topic, I would like to tell parents that there is help outside. There is, there is resources. The, the parent educators, we are working on it. We are working intensively because uh, we know how stressful it is uh, for you as a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is hope. There is two tools I would like to recommend if, if it's okay. And this is approved by my clients. Okay. I don't have it. I have not used it personally because I don't need to. Mm -hmm. um, I have only one child. You know, we don't have too many devices. Like I control that. Mm -hmm. In my household, I didn't get an iPad or an iPod or a phone. When you have too many devices, it's hard to control. Yes. I have only TV. And so that's okay mm -hmm. to control. Um, so one of my clients, many of my clients actually use this device called Torch. Okay. And, and it's a small device. It connects to all your household devices in one place. You can create an account uh, on your phone or your on the app and uh, monitor what they use, how much they use. You can turn off the Wi-Fi in the household. There is a lot of things you can do to control this experience from outside. Mm -hmm. um, that's one. It's called Torch. Then there is another one called Circle uh, by Disney, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm not so sure um, the correct name. But if you type Circle uh, by Disney, it, it will pop up. And that's pretty fascinating because my clients have been using that. And they see how much their child is using what, what device, what are they watching. They can, you can press turn off and from your phone, you can turn off everything in your household when you are not home. Um, I, some of the stuff sounds harsh, like in terms of control, but many families do need this kind of control. If you are a working parent and your children are home, they haven't done homework, they haven't done any other things, maybe uh, you can discuss that from three to six, you're going to have no Wi-Fi and I'm going to control that. Mm -hmm. And 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 you can again talk about those um, rules that you're going to implement through those devices. But uh, those are two things that parents find helpful. Wow! Thank you. That's very useful because um, <coughs> it is nice to have some tools. I know mm -hmm. it can be harsh, but I I agree with you. Some families really need to be that harsh until they balance again. Until they yes yes more communication skills. Mm -hmm. What is a um, habit, a daily habit that contributes to parents to be more mindful around this topic? What is a daily habit that parents can use mm -hmm. to, 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 to do parenting? Uh, to do parenting. <laughs> Not punish your children for being on the phone or having a phone or uh, I would say just have daily conversations about those things. What have you seen? This is what I so share and talk uh, about subjects, but also have rules in, in your household, uh, common rules like at dinner time, no cell phones. Have like a common charging place. Don't charge your cell phones in your bedrooms, right? It's very dangerous. So I would say those kind of um, rules that are related to maintaining your health and balance um, parents can definitely create that as a habit for themselves too. Okay, you know? of course. We, we want to create for ourselves. If, yeah. if I say no technology around dinner time, but I'm just texting the whole time, then that's not right. Um, come up with rules that are doable for you too. You know, you don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's a good, that's a good, um, uh, yes. That's true. Yeah. Yes. In any related book that you like about it? Yes, I would highly recommend Dr. Richard Fried's book. It's called Wired Child, Reclaiming Childhood in the Digital Age. 
why I love this book because it's very well researched. Dr. Richard Fried writes about this topic. He's a psychotherapist. He works with families who are dealing with this issue. He writes about this. He talks about this topic and his book is excellent. All the research that is out there, it's just in one book and you can educate yourself. I think the key for parents is to have information about this topic because many people say, oh, it's wrong, it's bad, but we don't know the real implications. Once you educate yourself, once you learn how it impacts your uh, young child's b- developing brain, then you become very aware of it and you create change. Um I think it's that's that's a good book. That's what I would recommend. Yeah, excellent. Wow, um, it has been amazing talking to you. Uh, thank you for taking your time for the Emotions in Harmony podcast. Yes, and, thank you um, for inviting me. I love the name Emotions in Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ha- I went through a crisis of the name as as you were a couple episodes ago in yours, mm-hmm. um, and I decided to stay with the name yeah it's a beautiful name i love your logo it goes perfectly well and that's all we're trying to do find harmony in our emotions right that's right yeah that's right (laughs) yeah well thank you thank you anna for being uh for sharing your knowledge with um our listeners and um i know you have a facebook group for your parenting i know you have a podcast could you uh, tell us a little about because some people will want just to stay with you after this interview? Sure. I My Facebook, if you go to my website, authenticparenting.com, you'll see a big yellow button. It says join the community. And uh, it's for parents who are on the conscious parenting path, who want to parent differently than their parents. Uh, and it's not just a regular Facebook group. I offer support for free. I believe parents need support and guidance and sometimes they don't have money to hire people and work with them. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean they should be denied of access for the, such help. So uh, I offer free webinars, free support calls on a monthly basis. So you're welcome to join my group. And of course, um, if you want to learn all about yourself, elevate your consciousness, as I say in my podcast, you can listen to my podcast, Authentic Parenting. Okay. Wherever you listen to podcasts. Yes. Are you also in Spotify now? I'm in Spotify, Google Play Music, um, iHeart Radio, um, everywhere, 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 wherever you, even Alexa, you can say Alexa, uh, open authentic parenting and your Alexa or your Google Home can play that. I didn't Ooh. know that it can do it. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. I will it's try. I will try after this interview with my Alexa. It's it's everywhere, yes. Uh Mm -hmm. And let me know how it is because I don't have an Alexa. (laughs) Probably as we are talking, it it is listening because Alexa listens everything. That's the bad part of it. (laughs) Oh, gosh. And that's what I don't like about uh, technology. That part is not fun. It's very smart. You know, somebody texted me the other day an address. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to find in later, I was trying to find in my maps. I just typed in 61 H and it got the mm-hmm. address already. The yeah. phones are so smart. Yeah. Or I was thinking of a music song. I was singing to myself. And then when I go to my phone, it just plays for me. I'm like, whoa, this is yeah, a little too that's, weird. That's too weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we live in that world. Yes. Why yeah. we want parents to be mindful and to be caring and loving the way the way they want to be. Yeah. Around their yeah. children and social media. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Um it has Thank been you. a great pleasure. And um if you give me your permission, I will do the same topic in Spanish. Um using your information and your um uh, name and everything, I will kind of paraphrase. Yes, yeah, sure. This is a new project. This yeah. is a new project because what I did before, only Spanish or only English accordingly to the guest. But then my listeners start saying, I want that in Spanish or I want that in English. Yeah. Assuming I, you don't I speak wish, English. Uh, lo, lo siento no <laughs> hablar español um, <laughs> uh, mucho. Comprendo mucho, pero, <laughs> pero uh, uh, habla un poquito. <laughs> And, um, <laughs> 
con, so per, you, con you, parenting es muy difícil yeah. um, expresión conceptos en español. <laughs> I, I think we should do the Spanish. I think your Spanish is going great. <laughs> <laughs> Muchas gracias, señora. <laughs> I will do the Spanish and you will be able to listen uh, and what I say and uh, we can do any correction, but I, I don't try to translate. I just try yeah. to to reflect the same concept and the same yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, it's okay with me. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. For now, Anna. Yes. Bye. We have ended one more episode of Emotions in Harmony. See you the next one when Dr. Carmen Roman will help us to have a more fulfilled life caring for ourselves and the ones we care for. Meanwhile, visit www.emotionsinharmony.com to see the show notes, subscribe, and enjoy more content.